I'm back here with another video from Lassie Metal Shaping. Um, as I said earlier in the video that now when I'm not manufacturing as much equipment anymore then I have time to learn more and learn more tips and tricks and that will mean that I have more to teach you here on YouTube as well. So hang on. On this video I'm going to show you um, a piece that was tricky at least for me to do I could uh, maybe one of you guys or uh, several of you out there that that's easy to do but I didn't want to hammer this piece out so I, I wanted to be able to do it in my equipment so it's always happened that when you have a question in your mind and you don't know how to fix it and you don't focus on it then one day it just comes to you and it's, it's just, oh, I can probably do it that way. And that's exactly what happened here. So I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you a video, um, a close up video. But I'm going to show you this pocket here, how to make that on the cowl piece. That piece there that have been, I didn't know for years how to make that piece. But now I know. So let's take a little close up video of that part and then I'm going to show you in the video all how to do that. I think this video will be uh, close up enough so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the roach that I have up, up on the rack but I think this will give you the best picture of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to make this, what I call it the pocket or reset. And as I said, it was difficult to make that for years, but I figured it out how to do it. It takes a little bit of hammering and, and on a sandbag and a little dolly and stuff like that. <clears throat> and a little bit of English wheel too. But it can be done and it will, I do it in the bead roller first, I give it a start. Then I can continue work on it from there. So let's take a look at the bead roller, what, it's, what I'm going to do and what dies I'm going to use. First I would like to show you um, here on the table before I go to the bead roller. But this is it's a sample and it's always good to make a sample first and simulate the whole thing the same as the real piece that you're going to make. Then you don't screw up the piece that you maybe spent hours working on and then you do something in the bead roller that you're guessing how that is going to work. So this is a good thing to do a test piece and I told you that in earlier videos as well. So I, from the original car, I made, made a template for this. So I made a paper template layout so I can see it. And then I cut it with a scissor and then I can see how this one can, can form it like that for that that reset there then I transfer that over to a new piece that I'm going to show you how to do and then I mark it out this hole here is just for the hood bracket I couldn't make the paper because the hood bracket is riveted to the original piece so I made this from from the roadster now I have the, the layout there. Now I can go to the bead roller and do what I need to do there. So I'm over to the second generation bead roller here and you can see the close up of the dice that I'm using. And I, I did a test piece before so I know what profile I'm going to get. I'm using a slow speed because I want to be able to, to um, control it. So I set the center top die on, on, the, on the, the first line that I have, the inner line. So there you can see the first run. Now I need to do a second one. I cannot do this in one pass. I probably could have a little bit more pressure from the start. 
but I cannot go full full depth. And I'm trying my best to keep the panel in level so it's horizontal. So you can see here that I'm a little off from the line because I follow the inner line so, and, and the, the, the pocket or the, the reset here is a little wider here and narrow here. So I need to play a little bit, bit with that in the bead roller to um, make it more correct. So I think I should go down like that and then I think I'm going to change this profile in the corner there a little bit. And the reason why I do that is so I can follow more the outer line. The inside I can always hammer that down but to change the profile on the outside there can be a little difficult. So I think I should go one more time and a little bit deeper down. So now it's more full of the, the blue line from at least from here and down to there, okay? But now you see that we have a lots of distortion on this panel. And of course we don't want that. <laughs> and the bead takes material, so when I do this, this trying to do that, and it takes material from this surface here. So this surface here is too, too short now. Too, too small this way and too small that way. So I need more material. So I'm going to go over to the st big stretcher and I'm going to stretch that and see how far I can go to make this more flat again. So I'm over to the deep stretcher on this side. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to lift that up. So it's actually going this way now. I'm making it longer. And the best thing is to do many small steps instead of a few heavy steps. It always pays off if you, if you do that. I also prefer to go from the back side here and, and work on, on this part because I can see better what, what it looks like. I can see better the surface. And you can actually see how it's lifting up the metal. So the whole idea with, with doing this is that I can give it a start in the bead roller. And from there I can continue working with other tools to get it to the right shape I want. And on this spe specific panel, yes, it, it is a little different because I can reach in from this side, I can reach in there, and I can reach in there. If this panel is bigger, I can only go in from this side. But I can still make it a, a start in the bead roller and continue with a deep stretcher and lift it up. And then I can go to the sandbag and I can hammer it and, and it's less work with a hammer if I can do it in the, in the bead roll and the, and the stretcher. Yeah, 
then I can always go back to the bead roll and run it a little bit more if I need to adjust it there. I think it is pretty good there but you see this one is still not flat so I need to go over to the sandbag and to the vise and do some adjustments there and see where we where we landing so I like the sandbag as a working table to adjust things I, I, I really like that to, to work with so the first thing I would like to do is I would like to hammer this one down to make it a little more straight. That's one part there. So this one came up a little bit on this side. This here, I would like to bring this down a little bit. So it's two ways to do that. First, I can hammer this one down a little bit, but I also need to get this one down here, inside here, because that was hard to reach in with the stretcher and stretch that. So let me hammer this one, see if I can get this down. So you can already see now that this one is less than it was before. I still have the, this puckle there. Um, I think I would do this part here as well. This one came out better and that is because this one is deeper here so it takes more material. So what the correct way would be to, to actually stretch it more in the curve on, on, on the part of the bead that goes this way. But I can't reach in there. Maybe I can reach in there with the hammer and, uh, on the vise. Let's do this here. And then what I'm going to do, see if I can go get get this one down a little bit. I know that it is too much material here. I can, if I have a spot like that, I can always go in and heat shrink it. If I can't reach in, if this was a bigger pan, I can always go in and heat shrink that and cool that down and shrink it. But what I don't like here is you see that this one is curved this way. I need to fix that. And I did a little bit before, but I will do a little bit more. It's way more flat there now. I have little marks there. I can either go to the English wheel and I can roll that and I can smooth that out. So I think that's what I would do first uh, before I go to the next step. But this gives you a start and from there you can work your way with, with hammer and a dolly, bead roller and different uh, English wheel. To, but the, the bead roller with this reset here give you a start and from there you can continue working
that makes it made it a little better as well. So let's go over to the English wheel and I'm going to do a little adjustments there. So I'm over to the English wheel here and I'm going to use that little shim under this shaft so I can tilt the, the lower wheel so the touching point is all the way there. Then I can take this piece and I can roll it exactly there. There you could hear that it, I had some damage there. So you must be careful so you don't stretching it in the right in the wrong spot. So if you're using a low pressure then then it's okay. But don't use a high pressure. And here with the wheel if I go a little closer I can make the bead the step tapered. So I can actually go in And make it a little, little less. So this part here I made a little less height. That means that it's actually a little more flat as well. This part here I'm also going to use the English wheel and I'm going to make this taper down to zero. So there you can see that this this bead here tapes down to zero, almost zero there. Let's go over to the vise and see if I can fine tune it a little bit here. I see some marks that I'm not happy with. So I'm over here to the vise and I'm using the edge of the vise and hold the panel there. And then I take one of my hammers that had uh, interchangeable uh, faces and this one is round and both ways and it, it I still see that it is a little high here, so let me take a little look on the, on the sandbag and see if I can move that a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm going to see if I can move that one down a little bit because it's a high spot there. I think it helped. So this is what it looks like now and uh, the whole idea to teach you here now is, is that you can give it a start in the bead roller. And then from there you can continue working. But with that start, it's so much easier than starting hammer it because you have a defined line from the bead roller so you, can, you know where that is and you can continue work there instead of hammer it out from, from scratch. It can be hammered out from scratch, but man, it takes a long time to do. So here you have both pieces. I haven't done this part here but that is just two dies in the bead roller that is offset and I'm starting with a deep pressure and then losing it up the pressure the further in I go then I can make it so it's fading out. But that's that's what it, what it looks like. I almost forgot one thing. I have one more thing to teach you here. And this is also a new tool 
old trick, but a new tool for doing that, a little better quality, or much better quality. And I have been wanted this for a long time, but um, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't available, but now I, I have a guy that made it for me. So if this is something that you like, you please go to my website and send me an email and that you are interested in this and then we can start make those have them made but it's no no i no reason to to make them up if if people don't want them so let me show you what this is i have shown you in an earlier video about this laser point and I told you that this you could buy this from Harbor Freight, but the battery is worn out when you got it from Harbor Freight, so you need to replace that. And I'm using those; have used them in my classes. And each class, I need to buy new batteries, and it's about nine dollars for for three batteries, and they last the first day in the class, then then they are worn out. So I wanted a piece that didn't have those batteries, so I need to change them. I want to have an on-off switch and bigger batteries so it can last much, much longer. So I had a guy up from Grass Valley in California and he made this up and I tested it and it works. I li like it, I love it. So uh, let me show you what this is and what, what, what it looks like. So here is this new little piece and this one is a laser line. You can see it there. And has an on off switch, bigger uh, AA batteries or triple A batteries, uh, and uh, has a magnet on the back side and has a bracket for the, the laser line. And I, I just love it because now I, the battery lasts a long time and I can turn it on, on, on and off. So that is a great thing. So let me show you a little close up. And Here you can see the laser line for the English wheel. That means that you can see where you stop and start. Helps a lot. It's also helping you to see how much you turn it for the zigzag of the tracks. So if you, 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 if you don't have the laser line there, you, you can turn it way too much and the tracks will be too wide, too far apart. But here you can actually see how much you turn it. And then you go there and you turn it the other way. So this helps tremendous, especially if you are a beginner and learning the English wheel. This, this one can help a lot for you. So this is, is a, a new product that uh, can be used for an English wheel and save you a lot of time and, and issues that you have when you're using an English wheel because it, because it is very important where you stop and start in the wheel and I have seen it in many classes the student starting too far in on the panel and stop too early that means that it's going to be areas on both ends that is not wheeled and that causes damage on the panel that you so you don't get it right So here is this this little uh, laser pointer or line, and this is the unit with a magnet on the back side. This unit uh, cost around 150 bucks, and it sounds like it's a lots of money, but buying the battery and for the other one. It's, it's eating up very, very quick. So to have one with bigger battery and last longer and an on-off switch, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great investment and it saves you lots of time and, and issues when you're using an English wheel. So if you have any questions about this, go to my website and send me an email about this that you are interested in this. If it's enough people that is interested that then he can start making some of those and we will find out the way to where you can order it so that's what i had for today 
as I said in the, earlier in the last video, that uh, the schedule for the step one and the step two classes for 2023 will be released here in October. So if you want to be on the list, go to my website www.lessimmetalshaping.com and send me an email of, that you're interested in, in the class that you would like to be on the list and you will be contacted before it's go public. That's what I had for today. I hope you learned uh, some new stuff and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. I have more tips and tricks and I'm learning something new every day and I'm willing to share that with you. Thank you so much and have a good day.